Good morning, interweb. Let's con lang. Last time, Mitch and I Ducky. created a simple number system for my language, OA. In this video, we're going to talk through some of the more advanced things you can do should you want to create a complex number system. That's right, it's inventing a number system too. <laughs> First up, we talked a lot about bases last time, so it's worth pointing out that technically a numbering system doesn't even need a base at all. For one, you can just give a unique name and symbol to every single number you come across. I mean, why not, right? A more sophisticated option would be to name numbers according to their prime factorization. In some ways, 3 times 7 is a more useful name than 21 or 33. Or do 9. Or 1 baker's dozen and 8. The main problem you'd run into for this is that you need to name all the primes something, which is pretty much the same problem as needing to name all the powers of a base. It's also worth noting that a number system doesn't need to use positional notation. For sure, look at Roman numerals. The digits are just added or subtracted together depending on context. In my opinion, Chinese numerals are a more intuitive system, pretty much directly corresponding to how the numbers are spoken out loud. 420, for example, is 4 hundred two ten. Yep, there are symbols for each number 1 to 10 and for each named power of 10. Chinese languages aren't alone in building all numbers from a limited set. Alan Black, a Papua New Guinea language, only has words for 1, 2, 5, and 20. 59, for example, is this. Literally 20 times 2 plus 5 times 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2. Another Papua New Guinean language, Ndong, has a system that works like that, but it uses base 6, which makes it cool by default. Suk Yure, a Niger Congo language, also does something similar. As does the Kipu. The Kipu is an ink and counting device made of cotton strings that uses knots to represent numbers. There are three types of knots a figure 8 knot, a single knot, and a long knot with several turns. This denotes 1, this denotes a power of 10 and the value of the long knot is the number of turns it has. Like a 3D version of Chinese glyphs. The numbers are read from the top to the bottom, so this branch of the kipu reads 1,729. 1 times 1,000, plus 7 times 100, plus 2 times 10, plus 9. Exactly. Now if you do stick with the positional system, you still have options. Like, you know how in a standard positional notation system, the base never varies from position to position, right? Sure. Well, in a mixed radix system, the base can change position to position. Specifically, each position represents a value which is some multiple of whatever the digit to the right is. You know, like a digital clock. Oh yeah! 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. Neat. Not only that, but we count up to 20 and 60 using our base 10 numbers, which by the way is a great strategy for dealing with very large bases. So if I was working on a base 69 system, I could bypass the need to invent 69 separate symbols by just counting up to 69 using a smaller base. In effect, allowing each column in my positional system to hold multiple digits. Exactly. Mixed bases can also be applied linguistically. Sure, it's a different sort of thing, but some stuff might get counted with one base, other stuff with a different base. Yup, in Mountain Arapesh, yet another Papua New Guinean language, these things get counted in base 3, and these things get counted in base 4. Papua New Guinea sure has a lot of cool numbering systems. Mountain Arapesh seems to be making a distinction based on size, just really inconsistently. Yeah, and you, dear Conlanger, could do something similar. You could mix bases by size, or animacy, or maybe even noun class or grammatical gender. Imagine if, like, German did this. <laughs> Similarly, you could mix your conlangs. Like in Tagalog, a Philippine language, two different sets of numbers are used. Native Tagalog is used to count these things, and Spanish is used to count these things. Same for Korean. Sino-Korean numbers are used for these, and Native Korean numbers are used for these. And yes, time-telling really does work like that. Fun! Hey, speaking of Korean, let's talk about how languages name very large numbers. European languages generally use one of two closely related systems, the short scale and long scale. In the short scale, the large numbers above a million get names that make up the Ilian sequence, where each term in the sequence is 1,000 times the previous term. 1 million, 10 million, 100 million, 1,000 million, aka a billion, 10 billion, 100 billion, 1,000 billion, aka a trillion, and so on. This should feel familiar to most of you, it's the system used in most varieties of English. Languages like German, French, and Spanish use the long scale. 
Same shtick, except each alien is equal to 1 million times the previous term. So 1 million, 10 million, 100 million, 1,000 million, 10,000 million, 100,000 million, a million million, aka a billion, which is the number called a trillion in the short scale. The long scale trillion is a million times the long scale billion, the number called a quintillion in the short scale. Terms like milliard and billiard can be and often are used here as shorthand for a thousand million and a thousand billion and so forth. The long scale was standard in the UK until 1974, which resulted in the absolute nightmare scenario of cross-generational disagreement over what the word billion means. So basically, choose either short scale or long scale, or just pick a totally different factor of increase. Maybe do what Korean does, for example, and have each new number word be 10 times the previous, up to 10,000, and 10,000 times the previous thereafter or a hundred times the previous, like the Indian numbering system. Or maybe even consider using squares as your factor of increase, like the ancient Chinese long scale. Going back to smaller numbers for a sec, note that the digits in a positional system don't have to be 0 to the base minus 1. Let's say that in decimal, rather than using 10 digits 0 to 9, we instead use 10 digits 1 to 10. So from 1 to 9, everything is the same, and 10 gets its own digit. 11 would still be 1 1, because it's still 1 times 10 plus 1. And once again, you continue up as normal to 19. Which is so far, but 20 is gonna be a problem. Right, so we can't write 20 as two zeros since we don't have a zero, so instead we write 20 as 1 times 10 plus 10. Very cool. This is a bijective system, and its lack of zeros means that any sequence of digits will always represent a unique number, unlike in standard positional notation where you can add zeros to the left of a number and technically end up with infinitely many ways to write it. Of course, the disadvantage of not having zero is that you can't write zero itself, but humans got along just fine without any symbols for zero for quite a long time. Digits also don't always need to be positive. Like, what about having a decimal system where the 10 digits are arranged from negative 1 to 8, or negative 3 to 6, or negative 9 to 0? Haha, <laughs> that's nuts. Yup, and you also don't need to limit yourself to decimal here. One very elegant numbering system in this family is balanced ternary, a version of base 3 where the 3 digits are negative 1, 0, and 1. The notion of a balanced base like this, with equally many positive and negative digits, really only works in odd bases, and unfortunately odd bases usually aren't very good. So while the set of digits is nice and symmetric, it comes at the cost of not handling rational numbers well. Yeah, a half in balanced ternary is either 0 0.1 recurring, or 1 point negative 1 recurring. Not great. Speaking of negatives, ever wonder what would happen if you chose a negative number as a base? Can't say I have, no. Let's try base minus 2, mega binary. Negative 2 to the 0th power is 1, negative 2 to the 1st power is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, and so on. Everything alternates between positive and negative place values. Fun! Okay, so 1111 in mega binary means 1 times negative 8, plus 1 times 4, plus 1 times negative 2, plus 1 times 1. Minus 8 plus 4 minus 2 plus 1 is equal to negative 5. Awesome! Linguistically, we can also use negatives. Perhaps 15 in your con line is pronounced 20 less 5. In fact, we can use all the basic operators. Maybe 15 is 10 and 5. Maybe it's both, the speaker decides. Or maybe it's 5 threes. Or even something like 4 true 60. Non-integer bases are strange. Like, if a numbering system's base is the reciprocal of some integer, what you get is essentially just the corresponding integer base just with its digits backwards. Oh yeah, 129 in base 1 over 10 is 9.21 in base 10. Other rational bases are harder to work with. Just like how in normal integer bases it's not guaranteed that any given rational number can be represented with a terminating expansion, in non-integer rational bases it's not guaranteed that any given integer can be represented with a terminating expansion. Like how 10 in base 3 over 2 would be this. Right, which is very frustrating if you're the sort of person who cares about writing integers in a convenient way. An exception to this can be found where you'd least expect it, in an irrational base. Most irrational bases are impractical. A numbering system based on your circle constant of choice predictably won't be very good at writing any important numbers other than the multiples and powers of said circle constant. Base E is technically the most efficient base as long as you're fine with requiring infinite information to write any integer above 2. However, using the golden ratio, phi as a base, due to the defining property that phi squared equals phi plus 1, results in a system which can write any integer with a terminating expansion. Like the number 6 is written as 1010.0001. This property is a lot less impressive if you remember that it's also held by any normal integer base. But still, for an irrational base it's amazing that this works. 
Also, like before, you can draw inspiration from non-integers for your number words. Maybe 50 in your conlang is pronounced a half hundred. Or perhaps even two and a half times 20, which, strange as it sounds, is what Danish does. 70 in Danish is this, which is an abbreviation of this, which means three and a half times 20. Of course, your number words needn't be overly matzy. Yeah, like Tongan, for example. Just lists of numbers as if they were phone numbers. 1, 1, 0, 6, 9, 1, 7, 2, 9. Simple. And like we briefly touched on last time, number words needn't be, well, numbers at all. They can be body parts. As in, instead of saying 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you could say thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, pinky. Aha! Oksapman, you guessed it, from Papua New Guinea, counts in base 27 using these 27 body parts. So the number 12 is literally the word for ear, nata. The number 16, tan nata, is literally the ear on the other side. The Mayan language Tzotzil goes one step further. It counts in base 20 using the fingers and toes. When you run out of digits to count, you count the digits of the dude next to you. First digit of the second man, 21. And then there's Piraha. For sure, this Brazilian language has only two numbers, which don't express definite values, but rather relative quantities like few, fewer, many, more, that kind of thing. So one Piraha speaker might consider one, two, three, and four of a thing as ho-i, but five and more of a thing as ho-i. And yes, I know, I can't do tones. Equally, and without contradiction, their buddy might consider up to six of a thing as ho-i, and seven or more of a thing as ho-i. What these numbers mean can change person to person and situation to situation. It'd be kind of like the number six meaning a lot, but not a whole lot, depending on who you are and what it is you are counting. Counting in Paraha is strange. But not as strange as... The strangest bases come from the strangest numbers, and there are few numbers stranger than... 70! What? No, one. There are few numbers stranger than one. Oh, so close. In standard positional notation systems in base B, you get B digits from 0 to B minus 1. So in unary, you have one digit which is 0. LOL. The only numbers you can write are strings of zeros. Each zero represents 0 multiplied by some power of 1, and every power of 1 is 1. Unary is a base made entirely out of 0 multiplied by 1. Double LOL. It can still work. Remember, bijectivity. Well, in bijective unary, the one digit you get is 1. This is progress. Now the only numbers you can write are strings of ones. Each one represents one multiplied by some power of one. This means that every integer is represented by that many ones. Or like tally marks. Aha! Bijective unary has the property that addition is equivalent to concatenation. One plus one really is eleven. Now there is one base stranger, and it uses the strangest number of them all. 836! No! <sighs> Allow me to introduce you to Nullary. What, like... Base zero? Yes. So in base zero, you get zero digits, so you can't write anything. Wow. Great story, Mitch. Which is boring, I know, so let's say that you do get a digit. Let's say it's one. Okay, so what does the number one mean in nullary? Um, it would be one times zero to the zero. Which is? Undefined. Ding ding. In nullary, you can't write anything because you don't have any digits. But even if you did, the only thing you could write would be equivalent to zero divided by zero. Zero divided by zero. Zero divided by zero. divided by zero. divided by zero. Zero 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 for watching. Massive thanks goes out to the patrons for helping make Artifact Scene a possibility. In particular, Tarabla, Alexander Roper, A.E. Stevenson, Andrew Shahail, John Huyer, Robin Hilton, World Anvil, and Rip Passe. You all are awesome. Until next time, Edgar House.